So, so I built it, um, I, I advertised this as a tour through the universe. And I think I've kind of stuck around the, um, around our local neighborhood. Um, I, we talked a little bit about, uh, oh, I lost it again. We talked a little bit about the uh, um, Large Magellanic Cloud, which is an object outside of our galaxy. But there's this aspect here where, um, <laughs> as you are imagining looking at it, um, so, it, you know, for a casual observer, it's uh, super easy to miss that. Um, this is where you do need instruments like telescopes to see that this is not a cloud. Um, it's uh, actually a very collection of stars. And um, once you've done the measurements to determine how far away it is, then that's when you realize, oh, then there must be a great number of stars enough that it would be its own galaxy. So this is where I think uh, we're stretching the imagination a little bit. So I want to use a slightly different software to simulate different things. So one of the limitations of a planetarium software is that um, we are limited to our night sky, as in the sky that we would see from the perspective of Earth or from the perspective of the solar system. Uh, which is, you know, our vantage point. So it's uh, good to understand that, but it's uh, necessarily limiting. Uh, take, for example, um, view of our own galaxy. So the center of our own galaxy is, I searched it earlier, the Sagittarius A star that um, um, a custom object. So. Uh, so that is where we believe uh, um, center of our galaxy to be. That uh, um, the Sagittarius A star, that's uh, the, uh, the super black hole that's at the center of our galaxy. And from the vantage point of Earth, this is what our galaxy looks like. Um, this kind of thin strip of brightish thing that's our view of galaxy because you kind of have to imagine, you know, if you are deep in the forest, how does the forest look to you? Or if you are right in the middle of, of downtown, what does the uh, city look like to you? And when you are right in the middle of the galaxy, um, <laughs> this is not something that you would recognize as a picture of galaxy. So there's a lot of work that goes into measuring observing different things and reconstructing the, the picture of reconstructing what the galaxy would look like if you were outside of the galaxy. So, um, so what I wanted to show to kind of help your imagination along is um, another software that lets me move my vantage point because uh, this uh, uh, planetarium software, it's simulating planet which is located on, our, on Earth. So I'm going to switch off to this um, other software called the Space Engine. And this one, unfortunately, is not a free software. I think there is an um, older version that is, um, uh, that is uh, free, but um, I'll be using the one I downloaded from Steam that's uh, not free. <laughs> oh, I see a question. How did they measure the the distance from us? Oh, that's an old question. <laughs> um, so, so let me launch this software um, so that I can kind of talk about what um, the, the topics that we will touch on in modules of five and six. And um, I do hope this works out okay because um, this is my first time. It's quite demanding software and um, there's a chance my things will crash. So, um, so, so let me first start from a view that you have already seen. I'm just gonna advance this time to now. And this is kind of simulation of what the sky looks like right now in Alameda. I think the location I picked is in Alameda. Uh, you can quite recognize that it's in Alameda because um, 
um, there isn't any detailed feature. So let me just move a little bit. Um, yeah, let me move a little bit so that it's easier to see the uh, features, geographic features that, that you see that you are in the Bay Area. Okay, so I'm a little bit up. Let me just uh, uh, center on the object earth. I don't quite know how I'm oriented here. So let me just go out here. And as I zoom out, that's where you can kind of see um, the shorelines that hopefully looks like a California Bay Area shoreline. I think that's Treasure Island, or at least it's supposed to be Treasure Island. So that's the simulated view of Earth if you were in some Earth orbit at a distance of about uh, 10 kilometers or so, um, or sorry, 10,000 kilometers or so, <laughs> forgot a thousand there. That's the view of Earth. And one of the things that, uh, that takes a bit of time to get used to is just a vast scale that's involved in astronomical things. So even though here we are at far enough of distance from Earth that you are looking at a view of Earth that would have that's what it would look like if you are um, in Earth orbit. When you turn around and look at the sky, the stars still look more or less the same. In fact, as long as you are within the solar system, the stars won't really shift around all that much. So I hope I'm, yeah, I hope I'm looking towards the North Pole-ish area. So I should be able to actually locate uh, the Big Dipper constellation somewhere here and find the North Star. I think that's Cassiopeia. <laughs> I'll give it a little bit of try and if I can find it quickly, I'll turn on the labels. Ah, there it is. That's the Big Dipper. And so this, uh, you, this is a simulated view of the sky or the, I guess, sky um, from the orbit around the Earth. So that's the Big Dipper using these two stars. I can locate the North Star, Polaris, that's North Star. <laughs> now, oh, let me, let me uh, look back at Earth. So I wanted to show you one view to um, show you how vast the scale of distances are, even, um, even among the things that are near each other. So one of the astronomical objects that are closest to Earth is the moon. And if you are used to seeing the, um, wait, where's my mouse? If you are used to seeing the picture of the moon as a, something like this, so, uh, so let me go to moon. <laughs> then um, these, oops, let me just turn around a bit, a little bit so that I, oh, wait. why is it so? Um, sorry, one second. I don't know why it's not. Hmm. I'm sorry, it's glitching, so it's not really showing. So uh, let me show it to you this way, I think. Um, so yeah, OK, I can quite demonstrate it uh, while the moon is all blacked out. Um, I think uh, maybe it's, uh, I can demonstrate it this way. Let me, since Earth is rendering properly, let me um, start with the view of the Earth. And what I'm going to do is I am going to zoom out until I'm at a point where you can begin to see the moon. So let me first orient this properly so that I'm kind of looking, oh wait, I'm on the South Pole, uh, let me. So I'm in the part of the view where I'm looking down on Earth from North, North Pole-ish. And I turned on the orbit because that kind of helps me set the scale for what I'm looking at. 
And you have to zoom out quite a bit from this view in order to be able to see even the moon, which is one of the closest astronomical objects on um, near Earth. And so this, uh, this uh, a green line here, this is showing orbit of Earth around the sun. I think the fact that it looks so straight should uh, um, tell you just uh, how um, <laughs> much larger the orbit of the Earth is compared to Earth. So you have to be about out to this distance where you can see both the moon and, and it says uh, Apollo 15, but that it's orbiting the moon. <laughs> so, so that's the moon and this is Earth. And this is the distance between Earth and moon. That's uh, how far out you have to be. So I think when you are looking at astronomical photos depicting moon or the earth, it's uh, kind of easy to forget this um, realistic length of scale. And this software helps, um, helps to show that, helps to demonstrate just uh, how um, big of a, distance you deal with in astronomy. There's reason <laughs> whenever people are dealing with something that's uh, large, we call it astronomical. It's because <laughs> the astronomical scales are so large that it's often difficult to develop a sense of scale for it. Uh, let me just uh, end this tour with a kind of view of things um, in the solar system and beyond the solar system and beyond our galaxy. Um, it's a little bit easier to do that in this uh, uh, universe map view. So I'll do that there. So right now you should see Earth and Moon. Um, that's the, at the smallest scale. And let me just zoom out a little bit out from here. So that, uh, so this is the view of the solar system. And yeah, the things are orbiting counterclockwise. So. That's what tells me that I am looking at this. Wait, what am I doing? Oh, wait, sorry, I clicked on something wrong. Um, so this is uh, <laughs> this is the view of the solar system. Let me just click on the sun and center on the sun. Um, and so this is the kind of the scale that shows the entirety of the solar system as we know it. Let me just zoom in a little bit because Earth in this scale is super small. Um, this kind of collection of things, that's the asteroid belt. And just uh, for the purpose of the scale here, the size of asteroids have been super exaggerated. Like if you are actually looking at the sun from above um, um, the kind of, above the plane of the solar system, you wouldn't be able to see the asteroids like this. Um, they exaggerate the scale so that you can see it. But that's the sun. These are the three. Um, oops. Um, these are the three inner planets: Mercury, Venus, Earth, or including the fourth uh, terrestrial planet, Mars. And the asteroid belt is the belt of asteroids between Mars and Jupiter. Um, there is one dwarf planet there that we will talk about as part of, I think, module three. Um, so Ceres, that's the one asteroid that's large enough to be categorized as dwarf planet. And this is the for, um, nearest of the Jovian planets, Jupiter, gas giant. And this cloud looking thing are the orbits of the moons of Jupiter. Um, the, the, so if I center there, the four nearest moons, these are the Galilean moons that I think we are talking about this. Yeah, we are talking about, I think we are talking about Galilea moons this week. So these four um, largest moons of Jupiter are uh, the, the Galilean moons that Galileo discovered with his, his telescope. And Jupiter has many more moons that's been discovered since, <laughs> too many to list them all. Um, so this is the solar system and the, vast uh, scale of and you know it's a three-dimensional thing let me just uh, um, uh, rotate this around so that you can kind of see uh, you can imagine there's a plane of solar system so most of the big objects in solar system are in a plane so this is the kind of the side view that you are seeing here and um, 
So, so that's the plane of the solar system. And as you zoom out, you will begin to see some of the nearest stars. So this should be, oh wait, that's just an asteroid, not a nearest star yet. Um, I think, yeah, I need to zoom out more. Okay, so that is Alpha Centauri, one of the nearest stars. And I think here is where, let me turn off the exploration mode so that I have a coordinate system I can refer to. So this coordinate system that you are seeing, it's showing you the, the plane of the, our galaxy. So, um, so I, if I orient the things this way, then you can kind of see, um, can I? Oh, okay. You can, so this is the side of you from the um, kind of, if you're looking, at, um, if you are in within the plane of the uh, galaxy and you're looking at our sun sideways, this is what it would look like. Um, so Alpha Centauri, it's one of the closest, it's not technically the closest. The closest is this one, uh, Proxima Centauri. But Proxima Centauri is, um, it's dimmer star than Alpha Centauri. So Alpha Centauri was seen earlier. Barnard's star, I think that's the second closest. If I zoom out a little bit farther, you can see a Sirius somewhere here. Um, let me just to turn off the lines. Maybe turn off some of the labels. <laughs> um, Oh, I think I might have zoomed out too far. So if that's the sun, that's Alpha Centauri. Sirius should be at about double the distance somewhere. Um, but I can't quite find it. Um, it might be the angle at which I'm looking at. Um, well, uh, there it is. <laughs> that's about 10 light years away or 8.4 light years away. And um, and that's uh, the brightest scar star in our sky. And that's uh, uh, what was labeled as a uh, regional, uh, uh, regional, no, 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 uh, seriously, serious, that's, that's its name. Um, so you see this as a part of the, what's called as a winter triangle. And it's part of the big dog. And I'll guess, um, I think one of the, videos from the winter intercession that's posted that uh, shows where Sirius appears. You can kind of see it in a, uh, forming an equilateral triangle pattern with other stars in the Orion constellation. Um, now we are still within our galaxy. It, uh, I have to zoom out quite a bit farther to um, see something that uh, looks like the shape of our galaxy. So let me zoom out quite a bit further. So it's, this is still the local neighborhood around the sun. It's only 300 light years in diameter. The size of our galaxy is about 10,000, no, not 10, 100,000 light years. So, um, so it's at about this length of scale that you begin to see the, the whole scale of the Milky Way galaxy and um, and somewhere around here is, is the um, Sagittarius A star. That's the, the supermassive black hole at the center of our galaxy. And oh, I lost the, our sun. I can't <laughs> locate it anymore. Um, so, you know, our solar system is in the outer edge of the Milky Way, uh, as far as we can tell. And as I turn this all around, um, don't think, uh, okay, I need to zoom out farther. To be able to see the um, to see the nearest uh, dwarf galaxies, so uh, there's that. So that's a large Magellanic cloud. It's a dwarf galaxy that is gravitationally bound to Milky Way. It's uh, orbiting Milky Way and uh, in a, along with a constellation of other dwarf galaxies. Small Magellanic cloud is another one, and um, and the nearest galaxy of similar size as the Milky Way is about uh, 2 million light years away. So I need to go out farther at around here. Um, Triangulum is one of the other galaxies near us. Um, 
Andromeda galaxy should it be, wait, I think I jumped out too far. Where's Andromeda? Um, I don't know, I can't quite, uh, there it is. Andromeda galaxy that uh, um, we think it's a galaxy of about similar size to Milky Way. And uh, that's about 2 million light years away. And one of the ways we figure that um, Milky Way, let me see if I can jump back into Milky Way. The, one of the ways we figure that um, Milky Way has the shape that's uh, illustrated this way is uh, through observation of other galaxies. Because when we look at the galaxies outside of Milky Way, we see this kind of uh, spiral shape. And, um, and, you know, using that as a starting point to, to imagine what our galaxy would look like and putting together different pieces of observation, what we observe is consistent with the assumption that Milky Way is a far the spiral galaxy. Let me zoom this out to the uh, biggest possible scale. Sorry, I'm way over time. Uh, <laughs> I'll just zoom this out the way. So this is what we call, um, observable universe. It's, uh, so, uh, so I don't quite want to call it universe because that might give this mistaken, uh, let me go back to exploration mode. Um, then if I just call this universe, that might give a mistaken impression that this is everything there is. Uh, we use the term observable or visible universe to talk about a portion of the universe where there was there is any chance at all for us to actually observe it. Uh, if something is um, 100 billion light years away, then you do not be able to see it because universal hasn't been around that long, long enough to for light from something 100 billion light years away to reach us. Um, so the observable universe is something like 20, 30 billion light years in diameter. And within this simulation software, I've taken care to turn off the um, what's called a procedural object. So every single dot that's here and that's a selectable, it's an actual um, thing that's been observed by one of the telescopes. These are the deep space objects. And when you are just looking at this, um, you might think, oh, there's this interesting pattern. These galaxies, they look like they are, um, they are like a barbell shaped. Is there any? Uh, there, is there anything significant there? And that's where I actually want to turn on the procedural object. This is the kind of the artist rendering of. Um, this is the the programmer's view of how what the observable universe might be like if we could see everything uh, where they are supposed to be, and when you turn it on, this is what you see. Um, so what you see in the, so the distribution of galaxies within the visible universe with the procedural objects turned on, you see that it's all uniform. And it's a, this, the fact, you know, it's a simulation, that's how it's programmed. And the reason it's programmed this way is to um, show our current worldview that we believe universes, uh, uh, isotropic, meaning it doesn't matter what direction you look at, any other, any direction kind of looks more or less the same universe in the large scale, and it's homogeneous. We do not believe there's a, a center of universe where there's more galaxies than usual. We believe any po one portion of the galaxy universe is the same as any other region of universe. Um, then, you know, you might ask uh, this reasonable question then, why does it look like this with the real observed galaxies alone? Um, there is an explanation and the explanation is quite simple. Let me just turn on the grid here, no labels. So this is the plane of our galaxy. So let me show you as a side view. Let me go back to exploration mode. Um, so go back again <laughs> forth between here and here. So you might notice that part of our visible universe where we don't have a lot of galaxies detected, 
those are portions of the universe that's obscured by interstellar dust in our own galaxy. But so even though we don't observe as many galaxies within these directions, it, we think it's just an artifact of the the you know the galaxy that solar system is in. If we could somehow observe everything without being obscured by interstellar dust within our own galaxy, we would see the um, we would see homogeneous universe. And that's uh, supported by the fact that in the portions that we can observe, it does look mostly homogeneous. So, so that's uh, the, the view of the universe. This is kind of where we would be ending things at in module six. And, um, and um, that, <laughs> this is our <laughs> journey for the semester. So uh, oh, let me just go back to, I think there's actually a shortcut to bring me home. Yeah, okay. Just to go there.